Hey, Michael, you said uh, yesterday that Nicola deserved to have a voice in the conversation uh, when, when deciding to play or deciding to rest. Um, what were those conversations like between yesterday and today? And what did you think of his night tonight? Oh, the conversation was he's going to play today. <laughs> I mean, pretty straightforward. Uh, but we're going to try to limit his minutes and, uh, and uh, get him some, some quality minutes, but not overwhelm him. No reason to play him into the 30s or anything like that. Uh, obviously, he had another triple double, 20, 15, and 11. Uh, I thought in that first half, we were playing a rather undisciplined uh, with no real purpose. Um, so that was a challenge at halftime uh, to not worry about playing against Detroit, but trying to make sure that we're playing the game the right way and that we're getting better. And you're always trying to create good habits. And I thought in the second half, uh, we were uh, much better, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Brandon Cristal. Uh, Coach, I want to follow up on Joker and then ask uh, Marcus Howard question, but any idea of what you're going to do with Nicola in Portland? Is it going to be maybe something similar, limit minutes, but let him play? Uh, we'll see. You know, obviously, uh, we're going to spend the night here uh, in beautiful downtown Detroit, fly to Portland tomorrow, uh, and then play them on Sunday evening. So we'll, we'll, we'll get together and talk tomorrow, uh, figure out where we're at. Uh, and, and make that decision at that point in time. Uh, but regarding Marcus Howard, uh, obviously there's three games in a row that Marcus has gone out and created a new career high. And tonight he did it in his first NBA start. Uh, couldn't be happier. The kid is such a quality young man. Uh, one of the more respectful players I've ever been around. I just congratulated him. He said, coach, thank you for the opportunity. So um, really, really happy for him. And you can see, like the last couple of games, you can see how he led the country in scoring last year uh, at Marquette. His ability to shoot the ball, and he's just in constant motion. He's never standing still. He's a tough cover because of that. And, and I thought he and Vlatko followed up their last performance against Minnesota with another really good effort tonight. Eddie Wingy. Coach, I want to ask one more Marcus Howard question here. Have you been surprised by what he's been able to put on the floor I know you mentioned you know you know he's a scorer you know that that's in his blood that's what he's going to do based on what he did at Marquette but the way that he has evolved over the past couple games is it just him catching up with the speed of the game or what surprised you about what he's been able to do yeah that's a really interesting question Katie because the surprising thing for me is that it's it's taken this long um you know I thought that you know in those games where Marcus got a chance to play because he's just a, a bucket getter. He did it better than anybody in the Division One level last year, that he would have some games during the regular season if we're up 20 or down 20, where he'd rattle off three threes or put, put a bunch of points up in a hurry. Uh, and that never really happened. It never came to fruition for whatever reason. Uh, it was not because of lack of effort, I'll tell you that. Um, but maybe sometimes, to your point, Katie, maybe sometimes it, the game slowed down from a little bit. He knows that with no Jamal, no PJ, no Will, tonight no Faku, he's going to get extended minutes. Um, and I think he also realizes that every one of his teammates is supporting him and rooting for him and cheering him on. Every one of his coaches is doing the same thing. He knows he has a room full of people that care about him and want to see him do well because we all know what he's capable of. So regardless of why it took so long, I'm just really happy in these last three games that he's shown he can be a weapon. And now, obviously, come playoff time, you know, we're struggling to make shots, whatever. We know what we have a player, Marcus Howard, that can go out there and teams have to guard him. You know, and you know, that kind of a threat is always welcome. Vinny Benedetto. Hey, Michael, I thought Monte looked pretty good in 17 and a half minutes today. I guess, what, what was your impression of his play today? And do you have a number in mind for Sunday as to, do you want to keep ramping him up again? Yeah, well, the second part of that question first, you know, uh, the last time he played, uh, we wanted to limit his minutes to the first half to around 14 minutes. Then going into this back-to-back, -back, we said that, oh, we only wanted him playing in one of these games. And I wanted him to play in Detroit in front of his, in front of his family and friends. Um, and we were able to extend his minutes so he got second half opportunity and keep it just below 18. So um, the amount of minutes he played was perfect. And I agree. I thought he looked really good out there. 
running that second unit, making plays, looking for his shot, getting to the rim, knocking down a three-pointer. Um, you know, Monte has proven to be so trustworthy. Uh, three assists, one turnover. And then I'll talk to the, uh, the training staff to see come Sunday afternoon, you know, or we want to keep his minutes where they're at. The one thing I don't want to do is overrun him, overload him, and have any risk of one of those soft tissue injuries uh, reoccurring. You know, that would be a devastating loss for us going into the first round. Esteban Abed. Hi, coach. Congrats for the win. Um, uh, after the Sunday, uh, the team have a, a lot of days to rest about the play-in. This is a great opportunity for the for the players who recover for the injuries. Oh yes, it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, no great. You know, it's, it's great because um, all year long, even going way back, middle of the season, I remember talking to our guys about we don't want to be in that playing tournament, and we want to do everything we can to avoid that. Uh, and obviously. The fact that we have a road record of 22 and 13, which I believe, according to our crack PR staff, led by Steve Levins and Cody Wise, that that is the best road record uh, in Nuggets history. And it's also the most wins and the best road winning percentage in Nuggets history. So I think that's a tremendous testament to the mental and physical toughness and resiliency of our team. But that week you mentioned, Esteban, will be very important We'll get back really late from Sunday night's game from Portland. We'll give our guys Monday off, give them an off day, get their bodies right. And then on Tuesday, we'll start working slowly but surely, preparing for our first round opponent, whether that's Dallas, whether that's Portland, whether that's LA. Uh, we really don't care. Um, we're going into all these games with, with the mindset of we're worried about ourselves first and foremost. And whoever we play, we know is going to be a tremendous challenge. Hey coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Brandon Kristall. Uh, I guess to kind of continue the Marcus Howard question, and Katie touched on just, you know, his ability to score. Is it too early to think about this kid demanding minutes when you get Monte healthy and you get maybe Dozier back and Will back that with his instant offense, you have to consider throwing him in there at various points? Well, I think everything's always on the table. I think if you followed us the last couple of years in the postseason, uh, you know, we're going to make whatever adjustments we need to to help us win a game and win a series, whether that's changing the starting lineup, changing the rotation, or putting a guy out there that maybe has not played a ton before. Um, so that's all going to depend on how the series is going, how the games are going. But the most important thing about this is that Marcus now has three games where he's gotten better every game, and he's shown to his teammates, the coaching staff, that he's capable of going out there and putting the ball in the hole. And that obviously is a skill that everybody wants. Shooting makes up for a multitude of sins, and Marcus Howard can definitely shoot the ball. All right, that'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.